Cairo's Tahrir Square is again echoing with freedom's call. This time for Syria. Just across the city, a building which is a hub of Syrian opposition activity in Cairo. I've come to meet Haytham al Maleh, a leading opposition figure now in exile. He's someone that Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad probably wishes he had never let out of prison. The building is a work in progress, much like the opposition's plans to oust the Assad regime. Al-Malih tools the world, lobbying for action on Syria. They're all the people that you've met on this trip, or in Cairo in general? General. Visitors. I'm preparing myself to be the new president of Syria. Do you think I will be or not? The 81-year-old was Syria's first human rights lawyer. I feel pain inside myself when I see this, the woman, children killed by this by the army of the Syrian regime, or by intelligence service, or by Shabiha. Sometimes I cry myself. I cannot, I cannot see the picture on the TV sometimes, because it is so hard. For that, I ask God, to protect me. Driving past the Adra prison just outside Damascus, it's where most of the... I first reported on Haytham al-Maleh just weeks before the uprising in Syria began. He was jailed for a third time by the Assad government over his comments in a media interview. In these rare images of the interior of the Syrian military court, the 80-year-old is under heavy guard. al Malah is granted a few moments to comfort his wife. It's their last embrace before he's yet again sent behind bars. <laughs> Since being released last May, Haytham savors his freedom. But his opposition to the regime in Damascus comes with a heavy price. I feel that I'm, I'm in a dangerous uh, situation, but I don't care for that. The Syrian regime sent some people, some hunting people, to kill uh, the opposition. Not only in Cairo, everywhere. I am number one in the killing bill. bill. You're on a hit list. Yeah. His office is downstairs, with the meetings, phone calls and media interviews never stop. He's just announced his resignation from the Syrian National Council, the main political opposition group, saying they're undemocratic. They do not want to work as a really democracy situation. They want to keep everything for, for themselves, the Bureau of the Council. So I found myself must leave. And now he's created his own group, its sole purpose, to arm the rebel Free Syrian Army. And in the, in the end to finish the, uh, the Syrian regime. And he wants to raise a million dollars. Why do you need a million dollars? I want to buy it. Weapons to send to Syria. Where do you think you're going to get a million dollars from? 
from some Syrian people. Where do you buy the weapons from when you when you get these this donations? Is, this is, uh, I guess, it's, it's not a good question from media because it's secret. I get weapons from everywhere. You don't seem like we have several sources. One of the sources inside Syria, from the regime, from the army. Al-Malih has already been funding some of the rebel fighters, and they've sent him this thank you from the front. You're a lawyer. Yes. You're a human rights lawyer. But now you're arming the revolutionaries. Uh, the, the time is changed. I'm a lawyer in, in Damascus, in Syria. Now I'm out. And I'm working for support the revolution. And uh, now only the way good to finish this, uh, the regime in Syria is to support the free army. Getting money is one thing, but using it to buy guns is another. Haytham's German bank won't release his funds to Egypt. He's making a trip to his local bank to sort the matter out. They refuse to do it because the Syrian problem, they want to know what I will do and buy this money. We have no way, no political way to finish this problem in Syria and uh, the only way to finish this regime is by force to fight. So how did it go inside? Huh? How did it go? It's good, yeah. You're getting your money back? No, no. I sent a letter to my Minister of Foreign Affairs in Germany. He gave me back my account. So this is the game now. But there's no money problems at this gathering, a fundraiser on the anniversary of the Syrian uprising. When the distinguished guest takes the stage, he lashes out at the ruling Assad family in Damascus by describing a conversation with a government minister. قلت هل تيد الأفعى إلا أفعى مثلها كيف يمكن أن يكون بشار أسد خلاف أبيه and then the money begins to flow Assad and his family, they will face the same end of al Qaddafi because the blood invite blood. What do you want? For myself, I want to arrest them all, put them in jail and start investigating them. Back in the office, these men have turned up saying they represent a rebel group and want funding. But in this murky world of arms dealing and spies, Haytham must tread very carefully. This is Zuhair Sadiq, a man who gave false testimony accusing Syria of killing the late Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. 
The killers are still at large, despite an international investigation. Haytham is immediately suspicious. The meeting is going badly, and Sadiq starts getting edgy about my camera. The talk turns to Haytham's network that supplies the rebel Syrian fighters. Israel. <laughs> 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 Al Malih is taking a break in his apartment. With reports of abuses committed by rebel forces and after what's happened downstairs, I'm keen to know how he decides who can be trusted with his money. I know from the people who connect inside Syria. I mean, it's quite hard to define who the Free Syrian Army is. Is there some sort of order, some sort of hierarchy? No connect between all, because there is several groups inside Syria. We are trying to create one union Syria Free Army. Later, he receives more visitors seeking money. Rebel envoys have arrived from the battered city of Homs. They're discussing how to smuggle weapons into the country. Al Malik has never met them before, and it's not until late that evening that enough checks have been made to sit down and talk specifics. I'm allowed to film as long as I don't show the face of the envoy. It's a rare insight into the Syrian uprising. After the greetings, the talk turns to weapons. They discuss how they'll run the country if the uprising succeeds. It's now very late, but the night isn't over for Haytham. He's ducking away for a TV interview. How does it feel to always be on the run? What can I do? This time he's appearing in a special Al Jazeera discussion. He knows that as well as funding the rebels, it's critical to keep publicizing their cause. Yes, sir. 
بيتكلم الاستاذ هيثم دائما بعصبت لكن احيانا برفع صوتي ارفع صوتك هذا دليل يعني يعني حتى اجسامي حركه We've reached the early hours of the morning and the strain of the last few days is beginning to show. But the next day, Haytham has mustered the energy to continue his campaign. He's off to Germany, Poland and Vienna with an equally hectic schedule. And you're not tired of this? I mean, this has been almost like a lifelong mission for you. No, no, I don't get tired because I want to finish my job. I want to finish this regime. After that, I will be tired. Thank you.